Iran's ultimate objective is to conquer lands of the Middle East that were once under Persian control, spanning a vast area of territory from Iraq in the east to the borders of Greece in the west, and from Armenia in the north to Libya and Egypt in the south. Iran's aggressions, however, cannot simply be quantified by its desire to amass power. Its preoccupation with Israel and its compulsion to destroy the Jewish state goes far deeper. When we as Americans reflect on our nation's history, we tend to think in terms of decades or centuries. However, for those living near the cradle of civilization in places such as Iraq, Iran, and Syria, they view their history in the far broader context of millennia. Over thousands of years, the epic stories of their heroic ancestors, valiant kings, ancient battles, triumphant victories, and humiliating defeats are all passed down to successive generations with a deep sense of passion, pride, and prejudice. The populations living in these Middle Eastern countries are far more likely to identify with tribal groups and ethnic regions over what they see as arbitrary lines drawn on modern maps to form national borders. These ethnic groups know the extent of their ancient territories well, and they have not forgotten their moment in the sun when their ancestors rose to the pinnacles of power and prestige to form the great empires of human history. But the glory of the past has faded, and today these populations are growing increasingly restless and dissatisfied with the status quo. Many are disappointed with failing governments and disillusioned over a lack of economic opportunities. Still others harbor feelings of disdain for Israel and deep resentment of the West. Their radical Islamic leaders long for a day when they can recapture former glory, reassert power, and impose their vision of a new economic, social, and religious order upon a submissive world. During times of extreme discontent, these corrupt leaders manipulate or mobilize their citizenry toward achieving these objectives. Often, they employ two strategies to incite their populations. The first is to cast blame on another nation for being the root cause of their own internal problems. The second is to call for the reestablishment of their historic empires. By appealing to the proud heritage of their populations, they seek to pave the way for initiating efforts to reconquer lands once included within the territorial boundaries of their historic empires. Within the context of the Islamic world, it is not surprising that Israel is the first to be blamed by the surrounding governments of the Middle East. In the minds of many devout Middle Eastern Muslims, Israel is the little Satan, and America is the great Satan. Now, while this is a frequently voiced Islamic ideology, it doesn't tell the whole story. What lies beneath is an entrenched hatred, not simply of Israel, but of Jews and not simply of America, but more specifically of Christians. This is a common thread which runs through Islamic history and which is woven into the fabric of their worldview. Now, Iranian leaders are seeking to distract their people from societal ills, government corruption, lack of freedom, and an imploding economy by casting blame on Israel, spewing venomous rhetoric, and calling for her destruction. And yet, Iran, which changed its name from Persia in 1935, isn't satisfied with saber-rattling. As the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism, the Shiite Muslim nation has actively implemented an aggressive strategy to re-establish the power of the Persian Empire. And now let's take a look at the evidence of Iran's insidious march toward expanding its sphere of influence in the Middle East. So here we have a map of the Middle East, and you can see this is the so-called emerging Shia crescent of Iran. Now keep in mind that Saudi Arabia is the center of Sunni Islam, and Iran the center of Shia Islam. So both are trying to export their Islamic ideologies in the Middle East, uh, but Iran, for the time being, they are moving into areas to their west. So you can see this arc of influence, part of that Shia crescent, 
that arc of influence is moving into Iraq. There was a vacuum created after the Iraq war and uh, Iran is trying to fill that and has been doing so. They're wielding a lot of influence, moving a lot of military assets into the area of Iraq and also into Syria as a result, a residual effect of the war in Syria. There is a weakness that is there and Iran is trying to fill that void. Also in Lebanon, Iran has been supporting the uh, proxy terror group Hezbollah for many, many years on Israel's northern border. And so what Iran is effectively has done has created an arc of influence, a pathway, if you will, from Iran all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. That's the northern portion of the Shia Crescent. Now, if you look to the south, they also wield influence, a significant amount of influence, in the Persian Gulf at a choke point called the Strait of Hormuz. And that is an entry point that you must go through if you're a shipper, you're, you're uh, an energy trader. You must go through that choke point, the Strait of Hormuz, and you know in recent months they've been creating all kinds of problems at the Strait of Hormuz. And also at the southern portion of the Shia Crescent, they have been wielding influence at a place called the Bab el Mandeb Strait, which is the entrance or another choke point to the Red Sea. And from the Red Sea, if you're shipping from Asia to Europe, you must come through uh, the Bab al-Mandeb Strait through the Red Sea, up the Suez Canal, and into the Mediterranean. So they have been supporting the Houthi rebels, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Iran has been supporting this proxy terror group down in Yemen to wield influence. Now, why is Iran doing all of this? The reason is because they have their sights set on two specific entities. The first one is Israel, and specifically Jerusalem. The second is Saudi Arabia, and specifically Mecca. So that is the Shia crescent and you can see that it continues to develop. Iran continues to strengthen in its efforts to reestablish the Persian Empire. Iran's ultimate objective is to conquer lands of the Middle East that were once under Persian control, spanning a vast area of territory from Iraq in the east to the borders of Greece in the west and from Armenia in the north to Libya and Egypt in the south. Iran's aggressions, however, cannot simply be quantified by its desire to amass power. Its preoccupation with Israel and its compulsion to destroy the Jewish state goes far deeper. In fact, it would not be an overstatement to say that it emanates from the pit of hell itself. Iran's obsession is part of a much larger spiritual war raging between God and Satan for the kingship of the earth and the future king will be enthroned in Jerusalem. Iran's obsession with Jerusalem is evidenced by the fact that its premier clandestine military unit, which operates under Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps, is named Quds Force. Al-Quds is an Arabic name used for Jerusalem. This name wasn't chosen by Iran out of respect for Israel's capital, but as a reminder of its long-standing desire to recapture the Jewish holy city. In a recent issue of Zion's Fire magazine, I wrote, what has become alarmingly clear is that Iran's arc of influence, the so-called Shia Crescent, has spread to Israel's northern doorstep. The Islamic Shiite nation has extended its power and influence from its borders westward to the capitals of Baghdad, Damascus, and Beirut. Iran now has a direct path to the Mediterranean Sea and to Israel's northern borders through Syria and Lebanon. But it's not only Israel that is deeply concerned with Iran's aggression in the region. Saudi Arabia, which is the head of Sunni Islam and a mortal enemy of Iran and Shia Islam, is also deeply worried by Iran's support for the Houthi rebels to the south in Yemen. By supporting this proxy terrorist group, Iran has effectively opened up another front against the Saudis on the Arabian Peninsula. Listen to the comment of Israel's former ambassador to the United Nations, Dore Gold, in a video titled, Thwarting a New Iranian Empire. Tehran is determined to take the Shia forces from around the Middle East and deploy them in Syria, first and foremost against Israel's north, but with implications for stability in Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and the rest of the Arabian Peninsula. God's word reveals that an aggressive Iran will play a major role in the events of the last days. Time does not permit a full explanation here, but I believe that Daniel chapter 2 and 7 
along with Revelation chapter 13, indicate that a powerful Iran will ultimately align with nine other nations, most likely in the formation of an Islamic caliphate. These nations will unify under the leadership of one individual known in scripture as the Antichrist and will attack Israel from the north in the last days. These events will precipitate the epic return of Jesus Christ when he comes to judge the nations and take his rightful place as king of the earth in Jerusalem. No one knows the day or hour of Christ's return, but the Bible makes it clear that watchful believers will know the general time period. Current events are casting end time shadows. Whether our Lord's return is 5, 10, 25, or more years away, I believe the rise of Iran is a clear indicator that the time of the end is fast approaching. Share this video with a friend, and if you're not currently signed up to receive our free ZH Upfront emails, I strongly encourage you to do so. Simply go to our website, www.zionshope.org, and sign up for ZH Upfront. We won't bombard you with things you don't want. You'll receive flashpoint geoprophecy reports like this one, ministry updates, plus informative Bible teaching videos from Zion's Hope sent direct to your inbox. You won't hear this kind of biblical perspective and in-depth geoprophetic insight from the mainstream media. So I strongly encourage you to sign up today for ZH Upfront emails. And please remember, we depend on the generous support of viewers like you to make these presentations possible. Thanks for standing with us.